My name is uh, Dr. Mohit Bhutani. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Alberta and a practicing respirologist in Edmonton. The, the pandemic has taught us one thing is that, you know, we, the, the, the concept of what can I do to protect someone else has really become paramount. Whether we wear a face mask, whether we physically distance ourselves, hand washing, using hand sanitizer, all of those factors that we're now implementing is what I can do to protect my fellow Canadian from getting COVID-19. Very similarly, we need to think about influenza in the same way. What can I do to reduce my risk of having influenza and maybe passing it on to someone else? And the influenza vaccine goes a long way to helping us to reduce that risk. So we really need to consider it seriously on a yearly basis. Influenza is spread very much like any other respiratory pathogen. It's spread through aerosolization, meaning that it gets into the air and it's spread through respiratory droplets. And when those respiratory droplets, you can inhale them, so you can breathe them in, or if they land on surfaces, they can they can essentially live on those surfaces for at least, you know, anywhere from two to four days without proper cleaning. And so if you're to touch a surface and then touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth, you have a chance of, of contracting the, the viral infection. There's a very clear uh, demographic of patients that, that really are, are at highest risk for complications of influenza. So there's two real groups. One is patients that are where people that are 65 years and older. Uh, it's very clear that they represent the largest population of patients to be admitted to hospital. So almost 70% of admissions to hospital are people that are 65 years and older. And more than 90% of people that unfortunately die from this uh, infection are people that are 65 years and older. So that age demographic is really important. And, and one of the reasons why that is, is because unfortunately, as we age, the immune response to the infection starts to slow down or weaken a bit. And so the influenza vaccine helps you know, strengthen that immune response. So that group of uh, patients or people really need to be very mindful of the fact that they're at the highest risk of, of developing some of the more serious complications of influenza. Another group of individuals are people that have a lot of medical problems, whether it's lung problems, heart problems, diabetes, all across the spectrum, we recognize that influenza has an impact on how well you do with those chronic illnesses. And the more of those diseases you have together, the higher the likelihood that influenza is gonna cause more problems for you. By taking the influenza vaccine, you're boosting your immune system, you're boosting your immune response. And as a result of that, you're hopefully giving yourself the best chance to not develop the complications uh, of influenza. So anyone who experienced a, a cold or influenza in the past, you, you recognize that the head and neck and the lungs are probably where you notice the symptoms the most. So sinus congestion, runny nose, cough, maybe some mucus production. We know that is a is a common aggravator of underlying lung conditions like asthma and COPD. We know that viral infections all make up almost half of all of the flare-ups of underlying lung conditions like asthma and COPD. So it's, it's intuitive that we know that a, a, a respiratory illness will result in, in respiratory problem. And there was a very interesting paper published a couple of years ago uh, in one of the medical journals that looked at the risk of having a heart attack in the seven days after having an influenza infection. Now it's a small study, 360 patients, but very provocative. And what it demonstrated was that in the seven days after having influenza infection, a swab positive influenza infection, there was a six to seven times higher likelihood of someone having a heart attack in that seven day window. And they call it at the at-risk period. And this was surprising uh, in the fact that, we, the, that the risk was so high compared to the people that did not have the influenza infection in that seven days. But it also kind of makes sense, you know, when we do have the influenza uh, infection, our body is under stress. So, you know, when you're, you're feeling fatigued and you've got muscle aches and joint aches, everything has to work harder to just function normally. And you know that, right? Because you feel tired, you want to sleep more, you have a little less energy. So everything's working overtime, so to speak, during that time. So if you've got underlying heart disease, uh, and you're stressed, your body's stressed from influenza infection, it makes sense that you know that stressor could lead to a problem with the heart and resulting in a potential heart attack.